Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. And today, we're going to be going over the MK Slicer tool inside of Reaper. This is a great tool to have if you are a person that uses a lot of samples, uh, or if you even come from like MPC background, uh, Servato sample, this is a really great tool for you to have in your arsenal. It was made by Maxim. I can't say his last name because I'll probably butcher it, but it's on the screen. Uh, and for this, you will need a SWS extension and Rhea pack. So let's get into the video, show you how to get it set up, show you how to make it work, and let's make a beat. So here we are in Reaper. This is my piece theme that I'm actually using here. So let's see if we can get this MK slicer set up. So usually you have to have your SWS extensions set up inside of Reaper in order to actually use this tool. And you have to have the RIA pack installed as well. I do have a video showing you how to actually do this. The link should be below or top above me somewhere. <laughs> but the link will definitely be in the description so you can actually get that set up uh, if you're not sure how to set up SWS files or RIA pack inside of Reaper. Right, so you will need this extension set up here. So you go to extensions and you go to RIA pack. And I'm just going to browse the packages just so you can kind of find it. So what you want to do, once you have the RIA pack actually installed, you can just go in here with a filter and just type in MK. Right, and if you just wanted to download just the MK slicer, you can right click on it and just install this particular tool by itself. You can even change the versions if you want it to. So really, really cool. Really, really easy to set up. All right, so what you want to do is go up here to your actions. And once you're in actions, you're going to show action list. And in here, you're going to type in MK, this one right here. So if you wanted to make a shortcut for this, this is really simple to do. So once you have the MK slicer here, you can just hit add, and then you can check whatever key you want it to be set to. So anytime you hit that key, it'll actually pull up inside of the DAW. Um, I have mine set up to a toolbar. So if you want to set it up as a toolbar, right? And once you have your toolbar open, you can go to add and it'll bring up your actions list. You hit on the MK slicer and you can hit select and close and it'll add it inside of your custom toolbar. Um, I have mine set up here already and you can just set your icon if you want to as well. So you can right click and hit change icon and change your icon to whatever icon you want to do. And then hit apply and okay. And you'll add that into your toolbar. So let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna click on here and I have mine set up to my toolbar, like I said, and this is how it pulls up. I have mine's going straight to my dock. I like to have it right down here in the docking station. You don't have to have it that way, but it gives you an option to do it. So I like to do it. So this screen is giving you like a, basically like a, a real overview of what you should expect from this tool. So you can select the item up to five minutes. So this 300 seconds is like five minutes long. Um, so they suggest that you do one minute samples. So anything over a minute, they would probably, they suggest that, you know, not to really use it with this tool. You can, but it's suggested not to, right? So you have this option to get items, which is this button right here to get the item. Um, you can use the sliders and change the, uh, the detection settings. So like this threshold, you can change this threshold. You can make it higher or lower. And if you want to do a fine tune for this, as you see, as you see here, it says shift and drag the mouse wheel. So if I hold down shift, and I kind of drag across, it'll do a fine tune of those uh, numbers changing in the threshold. And if you use your mouse, your scroll wheel and hold on shift, you can do it that way as well to do a fine tune, or you could just do it regular uh, if you want to. So if you want to reset this back to the default, hold down control and click, and it'll set it back to the default that it was set already. Um, you hit space to play and escape to close out the slicer if you wanted to uh, close it out. So this will show you like the waveform and stuff. So I'm gonna just go through the settings first and show you what is actually in the settings. So let's click on this box right here. 
right? Gives you an option to donate. So definitely if you do have the funds and time, definitely donate. And here is the user manual. It'll take you straight to the forum page where you can actually see MK has done to this slicer. I think he did a great job on this. That's why I definitely had to have a video showing you guys how to use it. Uh, Cause I think it's a great tool. So definitely if you do have an option to donate, please donate. All right, so you have the script starting in the doc. This is the one that I chose. Um, you have a whole bunch of different options here. Um, you can use your escape, uh, auto scroll, the space bar to pause, snap area. So you have a whole bunch of different things. So this one right here is important to me. Uh, this split at zero crossing. So if you're a person that uses a lot of samples and you get like a lot of clicks and pops in your samples, I would highly suggest to turn this on. So when you are slicing, it'll do it at the zero point. It may not be as on point as you moving the actual slices manually, but this does work really good. Uh, if you're a person that gets a lot of clicks and pops in your samples, right? So you can turn that on. And you have it also on fades as well. So you can actually fade your clips uh, once you do the slices on them. And all these other things are already clicked and you can kind of go through them and test these out as well. Um, I want to definitely get to this user settings advanced section and I want to click on set user defaults. Right. So this default is going to tell you what the crossfades are. So the default crossfade is going to be 15 milliseconds and you have an option to quantize. So you could change your quantize strength from here as well as a user default. Uh, you could do your low cuts, your high cuts, uh, your sensitivity. You can change this all right here. So when you open it up, it'll start with your user settings. The offset slider is here as well. This is the one I like, the sample base octave. I set mine to three, yours might be on like two or something like that. I have mine set that way right now because three will start the first key on my keyboard. So the key all the way to my left, the first key is three for me. It may be different for you. I'm not sure what keyboard you have, but you can have an option to change your, your basically your octaves and where it actually starts. And then you have an option to shift your octaves as well. All right. And there's one more thing inside the settings I wanted to show you. So you have an option to select themes. Um, he didn't have this before. Uh, this is kind of new. So you can select themes. Let me pull a sample in and then kind of change it up so you guys can see. All right. So here's the sample here that I'm going to use. Something really simple. I'm going to hit this option here that says get sample or get item. And it'll process it and now it'll pull it down here into the sampler, right? So you have an option to change colors. Now I chose the black one. I like the black one, the way it looks. I like the green uh, and the gray, um, the classic one, which I believe was like the default. Uh, you do have to open it back up once you close it. This was the default one with the blue and uh, the red on here, which is still pretty cool. I really like this one as well. Uh, it's a little more uh, visual. You can see everything that you need. And he has a whole bunch of different ones. Definitely go through them, check them out, see which one fits or works for you. But I'm going to stick with this one here. This is the one I kind of uh, have been enjoying uh, so far. All right. So let's go through the settings on here. So I'm gonna start up here. This is where you can actually add like your different, your different grids. Uh, so I'm gonna change one thing. So right here, it says guides by transient under the slicing section, I'm gonna change this. So once you have it on the grids, you can actually move to do different slices. So you can have it on a whole a half, one fourth, and you even have the option to do triplets here. So you can click it on triplets and it'll do a triplets for whatever measure you actually set it to. You even have an option to do swing. So if you click on swing, uh, you can move the swing up or back, which is really cool. Um, and to set it back to the zero default, you can hold down control, click on it, and it'll set it back to the default. All right. So these two options here only work with the transient. So I saw I wanted to show you this one first. Um, your loop can be set if you want to. You can change your start point of your loop. You can, you know, put it to wherever you want to. It'll only do half the bars here.
So you can change the length of your loop right in here as well. Really, really cool. So let's say I want it. I like the way this is with these chops. I can hit on slice and it'll actually slice the sample as you can see in those places. And if I wanted to, if I didn't like this and I wanted to go back, I can hit on this reset down here and then it'll give me an option to reset those slices, All right? Um, the markers one gives you an option to set markers on your sample. So if I hit markers, it'll allow me to set my markers on here. So if I go 1 16th notes, I can kind of move my markers around, stretch certain parts if I wanted to. So yeah, so this gives you that option to do that in here with the markers. And if I hit reset on here, it'll reset it back to the default. Uh, the Q is basically like to quantize it. So if you did just do a slice and you didn't have, and you didn't have one, like, you know, the swing on there, you hit the quantize, it'll cut quantized on so inside of this track. All right, so this third option here that says random, uh, this random option is pretty cool. So you can hit this random setup. So you can actually set up what you want randomized. So you can change the order of the sample. Um, I think that's one of the easier ones to do. Uh, you can do some volume on here. You could change the volume. You could do panning. You could do pitch. Um, so if you want to just pitch some of them up and down, you could do position. So basically this will change or rearrange some of the positioning as well. Uh, you could do a reverse on some of them if you want to. Just have one piece or a couple of pieces reverse. And you even have an option to mute. So you can mute some of the sections uh, of the sample. So let's change, let's change some of it. So let's go to a couple of reverses. Let's do a position and a pitch, and we're going to change the order. So if I hit random on here, as you see, it changed the sample itself. So let's hear what it sounds like. And this is a really cool way to get creative when you're actually using this tool, this MK slicer. So I'm gonna hit on reset to reset it back. So I'm gonna clear this, close out this random, right? And this is all by the grid. So let's change this, guides by transient, right? So now we have transient markers on the sample itself. And this is where you can actually get really fancy with it if you want to. Um, you have an option to do um, low cuts over here. So if you wanna change your wave file, you could change the low cut. You can change the high cut if you wanted to as well. And you can just reset them back by holding control and clicking, control, click, and it'll put it back to the default. So we remember we had it set as a default for 200 and it's 2000 or 20,000. So that's that's why it shows that on here. So this is your gain or fit to gain. So you can make it bigger or smaller. So this is another option that you do have on here. And once again, this is the threshold. So you can lower your threshold and make more markers. I can increase sensitivity and make more slices if you want to. And this is the re-trigger, so it'll tell you like every at least 30 milliseconds, you can actually do a re-trigger. So if you increase this, it'll take away some of them that are really close. All right? So if you keep going back, you'll add closer proximity to re-trigger. So that's basically what that does. And this reduce here is really cool if you are a person that uses like a pad. Um, so you can set this to just do 16. So there's only 16 slices here. If you wanted to do like eight, you can do eight. Let's go here and change this to eight. And now there's only eight slices on the sample. So, so now that we done done with the sensitivity part, let's actually take away all the sensitivity. So we'll move all the markers that are on here. So this way, this section could come in handy. Um, this right here will loop whatever is selected. And this right here 
is a guide. So you can have a guide to where you want your slices to be. So it'll always show on the screen where you want your slices to be. So let's say you want to add a slice right here. So you can right click and it'll add a slice and it'll only select whatever section you highlight it. So I wanted to put another slice here. So I'm gonna right click and I added a slice, right? So if I wanted to check out this section here, I can click on it, just regular click. And now this section is highlighted. And if I play it, I can just loop just that section in here where that slice is, right? So I wanted to add a slice here. I can right click, add a slice. I don't need this on to do the slices. I can do them manually myself if I wanted to. I can just click here and add one. But let's say this is not where I wanted it to be. I can right click on the same one I just put down and it'll remove it. But the guide does um, help out a lot. If you are if you have a whole bunch of different little samples that you wanna kind of pinpoint. And you can always zoom in by using your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. And if you hold down control, you can uh, raise up like the velocity. I believe shift does the same. Yeah. So shift does the same. It'll lower up, lower or raise the velocity of the track so you can see it a little bit better. But yeah, so really simple uh, tool to kind of use. I'm gonna right click here, make another marker. So now I have a whole bunch of slices on here that I probably do want. But let's say I wanted to kind of um, go through them. Let's take off this. Put a slice here. And add a slice here. So now I have a couple of slices on here that I think I like, All right? So I can just do a slice and just cut it or I can just do the markers and then put the markers there and then adjust it if I want to. I can even do the randomize option, but let's move along. Let's go right down here to where it says MIDI. So when you, right underneath the MIDI, it has some different options. So the sampler, it'll create a resample Matic 5000 with a whole bunch of different slices inside of it. And you can set it to either be melodic or you can have it be percussive. I usually use melodic because the sample is usually gonna be a sample that's melodic. So if I hit MIDI, it'll create the sliced items. But as you see, the reset is not gonna work because it completely removed all the slices and put them in a resample matic so the reset does not work on the midi right at least not for the sample section but now i do have a really cool thing where i can use the resample five matic resample matic 5000 and what's really cool is if you wanted to you can open up whichever slice that you wanted, and you can adjust it as needed inside here as well. So if you wanted it to do different things, uh, you could do that right from here, which is really, really cool. But you have all these resample matic set up here for all these different slices. And if you wanted to play them out, let's say you wanted to play them out, uh, you can go here to where it has your input, click on that. Go to input MIDI and choose, you know, all MIDI inputs. Make sure you have it armed. So now I, on my keyboard, I can play. So now you have an option to play almost like an MPC if you want to, or like Serato sample, just from doing the little keyboard setup on here. And I think that's really cool. So these are just some of the things that you have the option to do inside of the sampler itself. So I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna go back on here to the top, click on this, 
make sure this one is highlighted and let's go back into MK slicer. So now we have uh, none of the things highlighted on here. So I'm going to add some uh, slices back on here. All right. So uh, let's say you wanted to go here and you wanted to do a trigger, right? So this is usually good if you have a drum sample in here and you want to break down that drum sample and it'll place it on the correct notes by using these uh, section down here. But you, you have to make sure that your threshold and your sensitivity and all that is set up correctly in order to trigger it correctly. And it gives you an option to create or you can do a replace. Um, they, so far they've done the same thing. I'm not sure what the real difference is between the create and a replace. This is more for uh, drums. And he put another option in here to detect uh, for pitch detection. So you can actually do find out what the notes are for this sample, which is really cool. So let's say I wanted to create um, some samples. Um, you can change how, if it's complex, if it's melodic, you could do a default, you could do bass, percussion, and you got drums. So all these options are in here. You can do create and you can do replace. Like I said, I'm not sure what the replace was, but um, it is an option in here. Then you have no MIDI and this no MIDI will, will add the notes to the actual sample. So up here where it says, you know, drip guitar, it'll change it and tell you what key is actually being played on the sample at the cut points. All right. So that's what the, the no MIDI does. So let's check, let's try it with the, the MIDI. So I'm gonna click on MIDI and then analyze it. And it's telling me this is what it found inside of the sample, right? So if you had uh, another, let's put a guitar here just to see. All right. So now if I play it back, So those are the notes that's actually being played from the sample itself. So yeah, really, really cool. I think that that is definitely something that um, many people can use. So if you have a sample, you're not sure what key the sample is in, this can actually help you out in determining what that key is for the sample itself. All right. So let's say that we wanted to um, see the notes inside of the MIDI. So if I go where it says no MIDI here, click on that and then hit MIDI. Now the slices, as you can see up here, it has uh, D4, G4, E, and this changed to an A2, a D4, D5. So you can see what key is actually hitting. I think that's really cool. So I'm gonna hit reset on here, reset that. And that's with the pitch detection. Um, a new feature that he just added on here is this tempo set. Um, to me, it's not 100% accurate, I guess I, you could say. Um, I'm not sure if I'm just missing how to actually get it set up to where it'll accurately put the tempo, but any tempo that I put in here, it hasn't calculated it to be the same but um you have an option to set the beat per minute so if you hit on this it'll automatically set this to the correct beat per minute so if i hit set it'll change it to whatever it believes was the tempo of the sample itself so i'm gonna hit reset on here and you have an option to do a straight or you can do it in triplets and you have an, uh, the item rate can change to tempo or mapping. So if you set it to tempo and then you hit set, it'll set it to whatever tempo it thinks it is. All right, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. This is the MK Slicer. So now I guess we should just make a quick beat. Let's get it. All right, so I found this sample and this is the one I'm gonna use.
So that's the sample I'm gonna use. I'm gonna hit get item. And this way it'll pull it into the MK slicer. I'm gonna reset the threshold, kind of just default everything back to the way it was. All right. So I feel like it's like probably missing a couple of notes in here. So I'm gonna uh, right click on here, add a note. All right. Um, one here. All right. So I think that should be pretty good. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to do a sample because I want to play it out. So I'm going to use this sample on here. All right. So now I can just pull up this, go here and add my MIDI. Set my arm to record. All right, and I can just delete these, move them off of here. And I can just kind of duplicate these over. Really, really easy way to kind of just chop up your samples and manipulate them however you want to. I think this is a really cool tool, man. All right, so basically what I did is I've used the sample. Um, I added a hi-hat loop in here. I added some Smash Kit drums. If you haven't gotten the Smash Kit, definitely check it out. The link should be below in the description, or you can just go to my Discord and download it from my free stuff. Uh, I do have a Discord available where we do weekly sample flips and monthly sample flips. But yeah, and then I added uh, 808, and I used some arcade to add some distant voices on here. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much what it sounds like now. And that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, this is an introduction to the MK Slicer. Uh, this is version 3.0. Like I said, you can do so many different things with it. I think it's a great tool to have in your arsenal for Reaper. So if you guys do have any questions, concerns, comments, please leave them below in the comment section and I'll get back to those as soon as I see them. If you guys have like any suggestions for the channel, definitely leave that below in the comment section as well. And like I said, I do have a Discord. You can join my Discord and the link should be below in the description as well. 
But once again, I want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Till next time. Peace. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.